Welcome to Home Library Book Review Children Series, where we select a book right from the shelf and explain its content through easy to understand text, graphics, example, and animation, along with discussion with family members. You can now order your book review video at www. Home-library.com. We will be reviewing Animal Stories by Ruskin Bond. This book will give you more information and knowledge about animals. The text is very easy to understand for children aged eight to twelve years. Ruskin Bond. Through his animal stories, also throws light on the fact that animals, being living creatures, have the same right to live as human beings. We will be covering the entire book in different parts of our video. This is part one. If you like the video, don't forget to hit the like button, and if you are new to my channel, please subscribe. With the bell notification, so that you are the first one to receive our videos. Now let's begin with the book. The first story we will be covering is the chameleon with an attitude. This is the story of Henry, a pet chameleon. A chameleon's tongue is as long as its body, and Henry's most remarkable feature. Were his eyes? Henry took nobody on trust and treated anyone's friendliest gestures with grave suspicion. He did not bite. Non-violence was his creed. Many people believe that the chameleon is a dangerous and poisonous reptile. His rigid jaws. Carried a number of fine, pointed teeth. Henry became a pet when he was saved from death and brought home. During the rains, when all sorts of winged insects came floundering into the house, Henry would snap them up joyfully. The best known feature. Of the chameleon is its ability to change color at will. It is a power possessed by many lizards. His most usual workday suit was a mixture of dark brown and green set-off. If the day was dark and cloudy, he responded by changing to pale green. Only one species of chameleon is found in India, namely the common chameleon. Most species are found in Africa. Henry remained as a pet for two years, and one fresh spring morning, finding his door open, he set out to explore the garden and never came back. He had probably found other playmates of his own kind. Let's move on to the second story, a crow in the house. A young crow had fallen from its nest and was fluttering about on the road, as it was in danger of being crushed by a cart or a tonga. He was brought home. It was in sorry condition, but grandfather did his best to bring it around. We fed it by gentle pressing its beak open with pencil and pushing in a little bread and milk, then removing the pencil to allow it to swallow. As a result, the young crow was soon on its way. To recovery, he was offered freedom 
but instead he made himself at home grandfather and aunt mabel and even some of grandfather's pets objected but there was no way of getting rid of the bird they were not sure if he was a male but started calling him caesar caesar used to join them for meal times and dance on dining table till he had been given his small bowl of meat soup and vegetables he was very restless fidgeting about investigating things rip the daily papers to shred overturn a vase of flowers etc the crow will be the ruin of us grumbled the grandmother picking marigold off the carpet they tried to put caesar in cage but he became so angry and objected with fierce crowing and flapping that he was let free he did not show any inclination to join the other crows in the banyan tree and it seemed that having grown used to living with humans on equal terms he had been snobbish and did not wish to mix with his own kind in time caesar learned to talk a little as ravens sometimes do in a cracked throaty voice he would sit for hours outside the window banging on the glass with his beak and calling hello hello he learned to sit on the arm and say kiss kiss he started stealing pens pencils combs hair ribbons keys toothbrushes and false teeth from the neighbors it was caesar's gardening activities which finally led to disaster he was helping himself to a neighbor's beans when a stick was flung at him breaking his leg at home his leg was bandaged but it would not mend caesar hung his head and no longer talked he grew weaker day by day refusing to eat one morning he was found dead on the sofa his legs stiff in the air poor caesar his antisocial habits had led to his early end he was buried in a shallow grave with all the tooth brushes and clothes pegs he had taken the trouble to collect let's move on to the third story three bears Most Himalayan villages lie in the valleys where there are streams, tolerably fertile soil and protection from biting winds that come through the mountain passes in winter. The houses are usually made of rough granite and have sloping slate roofs that enable the heavy monsoon rain to run off easily. and in autumn pumpkins were left on roofs to ripen in sun one october night there was rumbling and thumping on the roof and the boys were woken up the friend said it is only the bear and is after the pumpkins looking out of the window they saw a black bear making off through a field with the pumpkin because they are short sighted as well as suspicious of anything that moves they can be dangerous it is said that bears find it easier to run uphill than downhill a little after midnight a bear came down to the edge of the field but he was suspicious he was however hungry so after standing up as high as possible on his hind legs and peering about to see 
if the field was empty, he made his way to ripe corn. About halfway, his attention was suddenly taken by some Buddhist flags. After closer investigation, he was assured that the flags are not dangerous. He then moved on to his original target before the flags had distracted him, the field of corn. But when the friend started shouting, seeing the bear, all villagers woke up and came out of their houses. The bear started when the villagers began to beat drums and empty kerosene tins. Deprived of his dinner, the bear made off in a bad mood. He ran downhill and at a good speed too. Uphill or downhill, an angry bear is best given a wide berth. This is part 2. If you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. And if you're new to my channel, please subscribe with the bell notification so that you're the first one to receive our videos. In case you've missed part 1, the link is right there in the description box below. Before we begin, let me tell you about the author Ruskin Bond. Ruskin Bond was born in Kasoli, Himachal Pradesh in 1934. His father died during the Second World War II and he was raised by his mother and stepfather along with other relatives. He grew up in various hill stations in the foothills of the Himalayas and these hill stations are setting for most of the stories. He wrote his first novel, The Room on the Roof, when he was 17. He has published over 35 novels and several collections of short stories. He has received the Sahitya Academy Award and the Padma Shri. He now lives in Missouri. Let's begin with the first story, Elephant, Rock and Roll. Elephants of any age are very mischievous and very nimble on their feet. In Assam, there is a belief that wild elephants sometimes assemble together to dance. This story is from the Bay of Bengal. At one time, elephants were regularly taken by steamer down the bay from Calcutta to Chittagong a distance of 600 km. They were needed in Chittagong to help in piling timber, a job they did neatly and efficiently. One such steamer with 40 elephants aboard laid anchor the first night in a calm sea of Saugar Island. When the crew felt the boat beginning to pitch and sway, they blamed it on an ocean swell. The elephants had discovered that by swaying to and fro all together, they could produce a pleasing rhythmic motion. So they rolled and rocked in unison till the ship was in danger of rolling over with them. The ship's crew had not known that elephants are among the most restless creatures alive. Always in motion, the man-outs were hurried down into the hold. With each one seated on an elephant, they made the animals break step. The ship stopped swaying. But the elephants still made more mischief at mealtime when men brought them their fodder. 
one of them casually tripped the man over with its trunk and straight away the other snatched away the bundles of grass there was no wolf at chitagong but that was no problem for the elephants they would swim and go to the shore the first elephant was lowered from the deck towards the water with a mahout on his neck and a seaman on deck clinging to the other end of the security chain but the seaman let go too soon the elephant fell with a mighty splash fortunately no one came to any harm and the elephants made their way safely ashore to those standing on the shore it must have been a wonderful and awe inspiring sight as those 40 great elephants rose out of the sea to walk majestically through the hissing surf towards the land let's move on to the second story grandpa fights an ostrich one day grandfather's horse had a slight accident so he decided to do the journey on foot he took a shortcut through the hills which went to an ostrich farm it was the breeding season and at this time the male birds are very aggressive and are ready to attack at the slightest provocation but he knew his dog sam would scare away any bird that would attack him on arrival at the camp he got through the wire fencing and got a glimpse of the birds feeding some distance away suddenly out from the bushes a hare came out and in an instant sam gave a chase grandfather tried calling him back but it was hopeless the ostriches startled and began darting to and fro suddenly he saw a big male bird emerge from a thicket about 100 yards away he stood stock still and stared at him for a few moments then his short wing spread and tail erect he came bounding towards him he turned and ran for the fence but it was an unequal race there was only one hope to get behind the large bush and try to elude the bird until help came so he rushed for the nearest clump of thorn bushes the great bird was immediately upon him and grandfather dashed behind the bushes breathless and really quite helpless he called wildly for help the infuriated bird suddenly doubled back on his course and charged straight at him grandfather clung desperately to the wing of the enraged bird who was whirling him around his arms began to ache with the strain and continuous circling made him dizzy suddenly the ostrich went into reverse and it led to grandfather lose his hold and he landed near the thorn bushes instantly the bird loomed over him and grandfather thought the end has come he raised his hand to protect his face the creature with one foot raised looked sharply to the left a second later he jumped back and made off as fast as he could wondered what happened to make him beat so unexpected a retreat to his great joy he heard the bark of his dog 
and the next moment he was jumping around grandfather and licking his face and hands. Moving on to the third story, Adventure in the Banyan Tree. The tree was older than the house, as old as the city of Dehradun. Among the branches were birds, squirrels, snails and buttons. In the spring, the banyan tree was full of small red figs. Birds of all kinds would flock into its branches, bulbul, parrot, menas and crows squabbling with one another. Halfway up the tree, the boy had built a crude platform. When it was not too hot, afternoons were spent there reading and propping up against the bowl of the tree with a cushion. One day, he had a grandstand view of that classic of the Indian wilds, a fight between a mongoose and a cobra. A huge cobra glided out of a clump of cactus. At the same time, a mongoose emerged from the bushes and went straight for the cobra. The grey mongoose, three feet long, was clever and aggressive. But the cobra too was skillful and experienced fighter. The mongoose raised his bushy tail and the cobra raised half of his six foot length of the ground. Though the combatants were not aware of the boy's presence on the tree, they were soon made aware of the other two spectators, a mena and a jungle crow. The cobra stayed on the defensive, swing slowly from side to side, trying to mesmerize the mongoose into making a false move. But the mongoose knew the power of its opponent's classy unwinking eyes and refused to meet. He fixed his gaze at Cobra's hood and opened the attack. The Cobra stuck Mongoose and missed as the Mongoose sprang aside, jumped in and bit the snake. The Crow and the Mena, still determined to take part in the proceedings, dived at the Cobra. The Mena flew on and reached its perch, but the Crow tried to pull up in mid-air and turn. In the second that it took the bird to do this, the Cobra whipped his head back and stuck with great force, his snout thudding against the Crow's body. The Cobra was weakening. The Mongoose, walking fearlessly up to it, raised himself on his short leg. The lightning snap, he had the big snake by the snout. The cobra writhed and lashed about in a frightening manner and even coiled himself about the mongoose, but to no avail. The little fellow hung grimly on until the snake had ceased to struggle. He then sniffed along its quivering length, gripped it round the hood and dragged it into the bushes. Thank you for watching our video. Please like and subscribe. Also press on the bell notification button for more videos like these. Until next time, take care and bye.